गुड इवनिंग लेडीज जेंटलमैन माय नेम इज मिहिर जोशी दिस इज द एम जे शो एंड दिस इज द सेकंड एपिसोड ऑफ द नाइट यस इफ यू आर वंडरिंग व्हाई आई एम डूइंग व्हाट आई एम डूइंग व्हाई डू आई स्टार्ट ऑफ इन दैट रूम व्हिच इज वेयर आई यूज्ड टू जनरली होस्ट द शोस एंड नाउ आई एम हियर इट्स बिकॉज़ ऑफ माय बेबी बॉय ही इज स्लीपिंग वेरी क्लोज एज यू गाइस नो सम ऑफ यू हु वॉच दिस रेगुलरली हेंस आई एम नाउ हियर इन व्हाट आई कॉल Uh, my room with my hall wall of fame lots of interesting things on this wall kisi din dikhaunga aap sabko but right now let's focus on our uh, uh, our artist at hand uh, she is somebody who's gone from uh, agra to new york and has lived all across the world has been uh, one of the one of the few people who has been taking indian music to the rest of the world and uh, she has released two incredible albums so far and the second one in fact was released very very recently like uh, i think on the 2nd of august if i remember correctly uh, and she had a new video which was released a few days ago which was absolutely stunning that's the thing that i saw and i said that man i have to speak with her i have to find out more about um, her experiences about uh, uh, the just the experience of recording in one of the most iconic studios uh in the world you know i mean a place where the beatles have recorded where some of the biggest bands in the world have recorded so there's a lot to talk about uh without any further delay without any any more elaborate introductions let me bring up on the mj show my guest for now uh the phenomenal uh, mrs ila baliwal let's get her on right about now and find out a little bit more about uh, her music uh, ila ji how are you good to have you here I'm very well thank you thank you for having me Meher and congratulations on your 7 years completion today thank you very very much it's been it's been a fantastic journey and you know i think the most uh, enjoyable part for me has been the ability you know just the uh, uh, the opportunity to find out more about so many fan, you know brilliant artists that i love and admire and just to find out more about their stories talk to them uh, get into their minds find out more about the way they go about making their music and i'm i'm almost close to having 300 Uh, individual guests on the show in fact since the 30th of march you are my 142nd guest uh, in this lockdown season of the mj show so in about 5 months i've been like i've just made it a mission of mine to talk to as many people as possible and i've enjoyed every minute of it and i know i'm excited about talking to you today because uh, like i said you know before we talk about the rest of your journey first i want to tell you uh, your video of bande mataram the song itself is phenomenal the song is something that we all know and love all our life uh, but i love how you have uh, done it your way and to have you know let's let's get into that first and then we'll talk about your album and about the music before that tell me a little bit about the making of bande mataram especially considering today is india's independence day which is why i thought you know today is the perfect day for us to have this conversation tell me why you decided to make this song and then do it at the scale that you've done it in so thank you for listening and appreciating i really appreciate it okay um so you know vande matram any indian uh, would know what feelings it is right we all grew up singing as kids in schools every independence day and um, but you know as i grew up i had this dream i i you know uh, i wanted to give the grandeur to this song that it really deserves and uh, i always used to think i want to sing all six verses in sanskrit and bangla and hindi so that with the subtitles so everybody uh, can understand how beautiful and iconic this poem is so that was my dream for long long time and um, i was thinking about my album for a few years um, and i wanted to do something with nature and one thing let to another i met ricky and uh, we kind of he da, ricky cage does music for environment so we kind of collaborated then i looked at the lyrics of the bande matram and i said oh my gosh it's not just describing the beautiful landscape of india but it's actually describing the landscape of our planet earth so i yeah. think this really works very well so um, then i said um if you recall like during our independence uh, movement uh, you know during british raj the freedom fighters would be punished they would be prohibited to sing this song so i said why don't we bring the world together in a 100 year later <laughs> just bring them all together so i decided to take the whole production crew to london 
and uh, we contacted the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and uh, the choir, and we said, okay, where to record this iconic songs? Then Abbey Road Studio was the natural choice <laughs> because Beatles have done it, and uh, yep. so everything fell in place. All the puzzle pieces kind of it took a lot of effort, a lot of time, and planning, but everything with God's grace, everything fell in place, and we recorded it. And it was a very goose bump moment for us when we were explaining one day matram to British people how to sing it correctly. So that kind of the whole circle came back. So that was the whole process. Yeah. So it's just unbelievable. I've got goosebumps right now because the story itself. Uh, when I when I just when I imagine the entire thing and you know the poetic justice here of you going back to. you know to england and recording a song which uh, like you said uh, had been one of the causes for so many freedom fighters to get punished and you know to get uh, imprisoned and what not to get go back there to go to the most iconic studio to take the royal philharmonic orchestra to get their one of their best choirs together teaching them how to sing this i think it's just unbelievable i mean it's it, you could not have written a better story for your version of this song and i think uh, again like i said it's so beautifully done i think uh, for everybody watching right now i know uh, the song has already got a lot of love but if you've not seen that when this episode goes up on the youtube channel of the mj show i will give you the song in the description below please go and check it out and in fact after we finish this episode on here on instagram itself i'll give you a swipe up link once again you must check it out and give it as much love as possible and like i always tell all of you when you see something you like don't just keep it to yourself share it with everyone leave a comment so that and i say this whether it's a new artist or someone has experience or like that everybody loves to get feedback and get positive feedback especially on the music and the work that they do so please don't just keep it to yourself leave a comment like the video and share it with absolutely everybody so uh, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about as i do when whenever somebody comes on my show for the first time i call it the origin story i skip the origin story today because i was too excited to talk about vande mataram but i do want to find out about this you know i mean uh, you come from a family uh, i believe you were born in agra right yep born and raised and in agra born and raised in agra and both your parents were scholars so how did your introduction to music begin where does the origin story of uh, uh, ila the artist begin yeah so i think uh, my mother was uh, very much into music herself so she used to play sitar and she learned harmonium and um, when i was born both my parents wanted me to learn music somehow you know that's why they named me ila which means saraswati and earth <laughs> for uh, Uh, whatever reason and um, because they were very culturally inclined and uh, my mother was a sanskrit scholar my father was a nationally renowned poet hindi poet so i always had uh, music classes at home you know in, in india small towns the teachers would come to your home and so i would learn kathak i would learn sitar i would learn vocal and painting and everything so that's how i grew up and um, I did dancing a lot kathak I did for a long time but when I was like 12 I started gravitating towards uh, singing more and uh, so we uh, had um, my first guru pandit sita ram devare ji he was from gwalior karana and uh, he took me under his wings and he was more like a fatherly figure he was just amazing like we had a very special bond so that's how I started and um, then i did uh, under his guidance i did my masters in the, from prayag sangeet samiti um in music and after that i got married so i came out of india but i somehow always kept up with the music you know i would go back to india learn from him and when he passed away i would learn from other renowned uh, you know gurus that uh, whoever i hosted gurus at home um any time anybody was visiting the country i was living so i kept the music going uh, yeah <laughs> that's beautiful you know uh, i would love to uh, take you back to your childhood could do you remember something that you would sing back then which you probably still do a riyaz of today or maybe something that has been a part of your musical dna and could we maybe hear you uh, sing a line or two of that something that your first guru taught you maybe uh first guru uh i remember because uh 
uh, you know, growing up in UP, uh, we had a large family, my extended family, and they'll all come for festivals. So I really sang a lot of uh, traditional folk songs, you know, with them, like all the cousins will get together and it was like Savan Ke Gaane, you know, something or something other. And in fact, one of the songs I actually used in my uh, previous album, Navratna, it's, uh, and it's very apt for now because it's Janmashtami right now, just we celebrated Janmashtami. So it's, right. a, it's a very uh, beautiful uh, song about Krishna's birth. And uh, <clears throat> could so we hear a bit of it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> Krishna Janama Jababhaya Krishna Janama Jababhaya Badhava Krishna Janama Jababhaya Badhava Le Chali Krishna Janama Jababhaya Badhava le chali Gavat mangal char Sunuri sab moti bhari Gavat mangal char Sunuri sab moti bhari Krishna janama Wow, that was beautiful. By the way, the first album, Navratna, is like the second album available on all streaming platforms. You should listen to it because now let me ask you, you don't do anything uh, in a small way. The album was launched at the Carnegie Hall in uh, in, in the US, right? I mean, like that's what uh, there are jokes about, you know, people saying that, hey, uh, you know, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And you say practice. Uh, all of those things aside, I mean, you release your album over there. And it was actually produced, I believe, by uh, A.R. Rahman, right? Yes, yes. So it was, I was uh, very fortunate. I had that album idea for few years and I was, uh, I wanted to bring the secular spirit of India uh, in one album and how better to, ex uh, you know, express it than festivals of India. So I decided to use all the festivals, you know, uh, Eid, Christmas and everything, but keep, keep it classical Bandish based and include a lot of uh, orchestra from all over. And um, I wrote to, I remember I wrote to ARG once and he said, oh, this is such a great idea. It, it can be national treasure if it's done right. And so that's how he took it under his wings. And um, when we did it, you know, it was really, it's, it's a beautiful, very close to my heart. This album is beautiful, Navratna. So um, then we said, okay, where to launch it? And uh, so we approached Carnegie Hall. We explained the whole premises of the album, and they were very excited. So that's how I launched it. And that's um, phenomenal. The, yeah, the new album also, um, this uh, Ela the Earth Symphony. I was going to launch today on August fifteenth at the Kennedy Center in Washington D.C. with the like three thirty forty artists, international artists. But you know wow. that wasn't meant to be. Uh, but now we have recorded the whole virtual concert, so we are hoping to stream it soon. I'm looking forward to seeing that. But you have played in some of the most iconic places uh, across the world. And you know, speaking of the word iconic, I also read about Quincy Jones loving your first album and loving one song specifically. In that, how, how, I mean, how did that happen? How did you get a chance to interact with Quincy Jones? Yeah, so we uh, we met him uh, through some professional connection, and um, you know I played the song, and he was blown away. One of his da daughters is actually Krishna Bhakt, so <laughs> she grew up in ashram. So they both heard it together, and they were just blown away. They said, "Oh, this song needs to be needs to go in Songline magazine, which is very beautiful magazine. It collects uh, songs from." all over the world. So that's how it came about. And he said, I have to uh, place it in that magazine because it's just so beautiful. And which was the song that he picked from the album? Was it the one about Holi? Holy, holy, holy. It was holy. holy. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just an incredible thing to have uh, 
A A R Rahman, you know, as the producer of the album, and then have it sort of validated by one of the greatest producers of all time uh, in Quincy Jones, and then to work on this new album. So why did you, you know, you mentioned that you chose to work with Ricky Cage for the the new album, Ila the Earth uh, Symphony. Why Ricky? Uh, why Ricky Cage? What what gravitated you towards him? Yeah, so I mean, I love what Ricky is doing with his music and his um, activism, and he's all about environment and um, you know, and he also believes in that global, you know, bringing the world together, coexistence. So that was kind of natural. I met him and we started talking. We got along very well, you know. So I think that chemistry is also important uh, when you're yep. working with people. So it it just was very natural. And um, since this was going to be about Earth, planet Earth, Mother Nature, tribute to our rivers, our oceans, our forests, I said Ricky would be the perfect um, person to collaborate. And it really was amazing experience to work with him. He he's so passionate and full of energy, and and I'm like that too. So it kind of works. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so you know, uh, you you really set the bar high for your music going forward. The first, your debut album was with a Grammy and Oscar, uh, you know, winning uh, producer. Your second album was with another Grammy award winning artist. Where do you go from here? What do you want to do going forward musically? Well, you know, um, I always have some ideas brewing in my mind all the time. I actually have my next album pretty much the skeleton prepared. so i once i'm done with the you know releasing this and just um, taking a little break i would work towards that and that also that album is also dealing with lot of human emotion across the world you know as humans we are same we feel the same happiness we feel the same sadness so i just do what i want to do you know and and then things start to fall so i don't know who i will col- collaborate with but um, i think it will come to me Uh, you know. I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, I, I, are you are you still in New York right now? Are you are you have you moved somewhere else uh, as we so, speak? Uh, yeah, so we we have a house uh, out, just an hour away from New York in Connecticut. Okay. So we are all here with my family. Everybody's together for last, you know, since this whole um, pandemic started. Yeah. Very and how is that you know the reason i asked you that is because i know in the united states new york was hit quite badly to begin with mm-hmm. uh, how, has how has this this entire lockdown period how has this quarantine period been for you yeah so i think in the beginning it was very very tough to see what was going on in new york city and you know i'm sure you all saw the pictures and you know the horror of this pandemic uh, things are better and uh, i think only silver silver it was tough to kind of pivot to your lifestyle and uh, you know uh, adjust to new reality but um, i i believe one silver lining was that the whole family came together which has never happened you know my my children are adult children they are independent but we were all together under one roof after so many years and that was Lovely. very special yeah, i think i i take anything positive coming out from any you know negative situation so i think it's fine it's we are okay yeah mm-hmm. well i'm i'm glad uh, you got the time to spend uh, you know you got all of this time to spend time with your family uh, have you also been working on music i know of course you're focused on this album the morning this album maybe performing like you said you got a virtual concert that you want to be performing uh, very soon but uh, did you get a chance to work on other music did you get a chance to listen to a lot of music how did you keep yourself occupied in all these months at home Yeah so so fortunately we had recorded a uh, pretty much whole album last year i did have plans to make some videos for some songs and uh, but i had to cancel uh, all my travels uh, but and also mixing and mastering had to happen so we could not all gather in one studio to kind of do it more effectively but you know thank god for the modern technology we used all the you know zoom and any uh, anything available to us so we were able to make all those adjustments and do it took a little longer to complete the album and listen and all that but we, i think that kept me a lot very busy and then conceptualizing the virtual concert was also a lot of work to because we are including all the artists 30 40 artists from across the globe so wow and a lot of um, even um, visual artists are 
participating. So it's going to be um, that all kept very busy and happily busy, I guess I would say, musically busy. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. So when do we get to see the virtual concert? So uh, we are in the process of uh, now finalizing and doing the you know final edits and things. I think sometimes in September, mid September to late September. Yeah, it should come. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, you know what? You uh, please let me know whenever that is happening, and I would love to share it with everybody and let people know that this concert is going to be happening. And I know a lot of people would love to watch it. And you know, I just saw a beautiful compliment that you got. Uh, there is Avanti here who says, uh, "Ila, ma'am, you have a beautiful voice, and it resembles Lata Mangeshkar so much." Has mm. someone given you this compliment before? And it, it truly, I, I know what she said and why she said that because I, especially on your earlier album, also when I heard it. I could see that influence. Has she been a big influence on your life, Lata Mangeshkar? Absolutely. You know, when we grew up in that era, when uh, Amin Saini would play all those Lata Mangeshkars. I mean, she was our go goddess, Saraswati. You know, really Sakshat Saraswati. So I, I of course, she is. I, I have idolized her, and uh, it is very humbling to re receive this kind of love. And um, you know, I just. You know, I just count my blessings. You know, I'm nowhere compared <laughs> uh, to Lata Ji, but I, I'm very, very uh, humbled by that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, you know, before we wrap up for today, uh, could we hear something else from the album, another song in the album that you really like? Because another co question that came up was, Actually, you know, I'll let you choose between both your albums. Uh, somebody asked you which was your favorite song on the album when we were talking about Navratna, but uh, we've also now spoken about the new album. So between the two albums, apart from Monday Mataram, which you've already sung for us, uh, could we hear you sing something else that you really enjoy? Okay, from the new album or Navratna? Yeah, let's go from the new album. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's see. Hmm. So this is a song uh, called Shiva, and it is for the five elements of nature, water, earth, fire, um, you know, all five elements. So, Shankara Shiva Shambho, Hara Hara Shankara Shiva Shambho, Hara Hara. Pinak dhar shiv, Ganga dhar shiv, Pinak dhar shiv, Ganga dhar shiv, Damaru kar dhar, Anala nidhana, Damaru kar dhar, Anala nidhana, Shankar shiv shambho, Hara Hara Shankar Shiva Shambho Hara Hara Wow, beautiful. That was amazing. And you know, I have to ask you, you know, apart from the music that you perform and that you sing and write, what, what's the other kind of music that you uh, that you heard growing up or that you even listen to today? Uh, is there any kind of Western music that you enjoy? I mean, I ask you specifically because, you know, considering you recorded at the Abbey Road, I'm just curious, uh, are you a Beatles fan by any chance? Yes, yes, I am Beatles fan very much. And I had a pleasure of hosting... Um, Paul McCartney. Oh, I, I, I was just thinking, you just I, said you hosted Paul McCartney, you were going to blow yeah, my dinner, mind. And you just, okay. Now you have to listen to this story. For dinner, yes. my husband and I hosted him uh, with his then fiance Nancy, now she's his wife. Um, and um, it was so funny because we were talking about Beatles and, uh, of course, recording and how did it, his musical journey and all. And he said that. Uh, he had recorded um, Abby, I mean, this Hey Jude, you know that song, Hey Jude. He had of recorded at the Liverpool, their Liverpool studios, and they thought it was wonderful and everything was great. So, but then they said, okay, maybe we should go to Abbey Road Studios once and then just try to see how it sounds. So they all went to Abbey Road Studios and he said, this, this is Paul McCartney's birthday, he said, it sounded crap. It was awful. So then they <laughs> recorded whole song again at the Abbey Road Studios. So that stuck in my mind. 
you know, that was like five, six, seven years ago that happened this dinner. And I said, okay, anytime if I get a chance to record one day Matram, it has to be at the Abbey Road Studios. <laughs> yeah. How cool is that? A, a, yeah. a random conversation at a party at home led you to Abbey Road to record one day Matram. That is, that is phenomenal. So you know what? I, I know most often if you're giving interviews or if you're talking about your music, Nobody asks you this, but I told you this is a very fun, candid conversation. I would love to hear maybe a line of your favorite Beatles song by you. I would love to hear oh, you God. sing a line of a Beatles I song. I don't sing uh, the Western songs. I really don't. Ooh. Uh, Just a line. You don't need to sing it. I don't need the whole melody. No, I yeah. I'm blanking. Hey Jude, for instance. You just mentioned Hey Jude. Maybe a line of that. Hey Jude. No. Um, I, I know that dreamer. I'm not a dreamer. Uh, imagine. Imagine. John Lennon's Imagine, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. You caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah. How about you? It had to happen. You? you sing the, the songs. Why don't you sing and I join you? Okay. You want to do Imagine, right? Yeah, let's do Imagine. Yeah. Okay, let's do Imagine. And just because you mentioned Hey Jude, I'm going to do a little bit of Hey Jude for you as well. But ima Imagine is such a beautiful song. I mean, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the lyrics for, for both of us so that we... Uh, okay, here we go. So I'll start it off and then you can you can join me whenever you want, okay? You have the lyrics? I don't have the lyrics. There's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Now you imagine all the people living life. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. Thank you. So, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much. You know, see, I had to do this. You know, I, I, so about eight or nine years ago, in, in my, I've been in the music in, industry for the last 16 years. And I spent one year being in the corporate industry. I wanted to understand how the music business works. And I worked with EMI Music here in India when EMI was still around. Okay. And that time I had traveled to the UK and I actually went and because I was working with EMI, I got permission to go and see Abbey Road Studios from inside. And it was a dream for me to, you know, just go and see the studio where so many iconic things were made. And when, when I found out that you recorded your song there, I could not... Uh, control myself but to get some element of the Beatles involved in our conversation today hence this kind of geeky nerdiness that just happened right now I apologize for that but I hope oh, you had fun with okay. it next time I'll be prepared <laughs> that so sounds great song. Yeah. Now that sounds great but you know what I, again I want to I want to congratulate you on this phenomenal uh, video that you put out the phenomenal song and the uh, album I hope it does uh, uh, even better than the first album did and it hope I hope it reaches a ton of people right now. and this is you know I was just speaking with a gentleman who was on my show a little while ago saying that this is a great time for independent music not just in India but all across the world because people right now are sitting at home and they want to consume good content they want to listen to good music and this is a great time to put out good music and I think you've done just that so I'm looking forward to now watching your virtual concert and I just want to wish you all the very best for your music uh, and I'm looking forward to listening to more thank you so much Meher thank you very much Vande Matram happy Independence Day be well be safe yeah thank you very very much for everybody watching right now thank you very much for joining us uh, uh, this video will go up on the youtube channel of the mj show like i said i will give you a link not just to the one day madram video but also to a spotify link of both her albums listen to the albums and spread the love uh, it's very important like i said earlier in the show when you listen to good music share it with as many people as possible sure you can send jokes on whatsapp but along with jokes send some good music as well people will thank you for it thank you uh, ilaji for being here with me this evening uh, uh, have a lovely day i think it's morning for you in the in the us right now have a great day ahead and i will see you very very soon thank you meher be well bye bye <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was the fabulous Ila Paliwal. My name is Mihir Joshi. This was the MJ Show and I will see you guys very, very soon. Good night. Take care.